And our first guest this morning is Małgorzata, Małgorzata Bonikowska, uh, EU foreign and security policy expert from the Center of International Relations. Madam, always a pleasure to see you. Thanks for taking the time this morning. Good morning. All right. Well, let's uh, let's get to uh, the the results of the bilateral uh, meetings uh, that took place between Poland and Ukraine yesterday. Um, we we did have a lot of good results, uh, but still a lot of items of contention. And I imagine most of these items of contention are due to internal politics in Poland. Now, I wonder if you could tell us how can uh, Poland uh, achieve uh, the aid goals it has for Ukraine uh, while simultaneously. Um, living up to the promises that it made uh, to its citizens during their elections? Well, uh, uh, the Ukrainian side also understands that Poland is under election time. So we have elections, local elections in April, and we have also European elections in June. So that's not really the best time to uh, go into details and negotiate things which are really tough for Poland, concerning especially the trade and the uh, goods, uh, agriculture products from Ukraine. Uh, however, what I want to stress is that the uh, important fact is that these consultations took place at all, because I think it's the only way really to resolve these issues uh, between these two countries. Mm, there is not a, a radical progress, but uh, what I think it's the most important is that uh, the normalization of the relations between Warsaw and Kiev, are, uh, it's the fact. So the consultations are taking place. That's not the last meeting. Um, the both sides discussed uh, for over six hours just the agriculture issue. Um, the progress is made as of um, taking into consideration that um, Russia and Belarus are also players and um, the European side has to do something about that. Um, we uh, are pushing for embargo, the de facto embargo um, for the products from Russia and Belarus. Um, I think that's very important thing to stress because the whole attention uh, during last uh, months was on Ukraine, which is a mistake. Because that's Ukraine right. And, and do you uh, do, do you suspect uh, that a lot of this attention was directed by uh, Russian troll farms, uh, for instance, I taking the attention? Uh, yeah. Partly, you know, it's a problem that we follow. Normally, we just follow Russian narrative put into our internet and mindset, you know, that's the problem. The Russians were able, unfortunately, to convince the world that the, the only problem as far as the trade um, is Ukraine, which is really not the case. Ukraine had to start looking for new corridors for its own products just because Russia closed the Black Sea. Let's not just forget that. Otherwise, all the problem with Poland, Romania and other countries would not happen, just it wouldn't be uh, really the case. So this is the initial problem. And um, this is very important right now between these two nations, because uh, unfortunately in Poland, it has been several months that the Polish society, especially farmers, um, just dedicate all the attention on Ukraine as a source of problems, as a troublemaker. While Ukraine, being at, uh, in the state of war, has to say, uh, has to sell, has to uh, provide some income to its own economy, to its own state. So I think both the government in these consultations wanted also to raise the fact that uh, it's Russia, it's Belarus, with whom apparently uh, the trade continues as far as agriculture products. That's the paradox of this situation. So uh, Poland will push is pushing for a de facto embargo uh, on Russia and Belarus, and in the same time, Ukraine understood Polish position that, uh, of course. Uh, the current government has to look at the interests of farmers and has to take into consideration the, the, the consequences of massive protests of farmers in Poland, which, by the way, um, are going to continue, apparently. Uh, if so I may interrupt you here for, for, uh, for a moment, because you mentioned that uh, Ukraine recognizes that Poland has internal pro problems that it has to tackle. So following your thought and knowing your balanced approach to that issue, I know that you'll be able to uh, probably answer me that. Um, but looking at recent statements from some of Ukrainian officials, uh, Ukraine seems to forget at times that Poland's interests are equally important as Ukraine's and that Poland cannot provide assistance to, uh, assistance to Ukraine on expense of igniting more internal issues because of it. So how do you think that um, we'll be able to reach a solution that will satisfy both parties? 
Well, that's the change, you know, I think, uh, and I would like to stress it, that the current government wants to discuss all these issues together. And from one side, we continue helping Ukraine and you know, providing military assistance and being engaged in very strongly in, in it, advocacy for Ukraine and also membership to the European Union. But uh, Ukraine cannot take it for granted. So I think in the same time, we are trying to, um, um, to present our position towards trade. And I think Ukrainian side understands now very well that in case of security, Poland is really a very good friend and nothing changes. But in the same time, Poland expects from Ukraine um, to understand the Polish position in trade. And the Polish position is in trade is that we don't want to have uh, really uh, a, a, an open an open access to the Ukrainian product because this causes uh, problems in the Polish market. So Ukrainian side, um, I think after the consultations, takes moves towards limiting itself as far as um, sending uh, Ukrainian products, agricultural products to Poland. So this is really an important change because it means that the problem will diminish because Ukrainians will try to uh, manage uh, the trade um, in a different way. So whatever the EU level decides, even if the uh, uh, the trade is open because of the war, of course, so the corridors are open. The Ukrainians try to understand the Polish position and will try to use other channels for uh, exporting products. So I think this shows that the government started really to cooperate, that the Ukrainian side just doesn't expect Poland just to, you know, accept whatever. And Poland is able to find the balance between security and trade. All right. So, so you feel that something has been achieved here because I think uh, a lot of Ukrainians, especially citizens of Ukraine, have been very resentful of Poland uh, for, for this situation. And I think a lot of the government as well. I even saw an article recently from Rzeczpospolita, uh, Mr. Krzysztof Adam Kowalczyk, uh, comparing the situation of Ukraine now to Poland's situation in 1939. Just quickly, would you agree with, with that or, or is that completely blown out of proportion? Well, it, maybe sometimes this historical um, analogies help, but I would be very careful to do that. I think um, the current situation is is different. We we have to understand that Ukraine is in a very very difficult situation, and of course it's a, the state of war, physical conventional war. But I think we also have to admit that the whole West is at war with Russia because Russia sees the West as an enemy. This is not a conventional war, but we are under attack. For example, cyber attacks. Recently, it was announced that Poland is target number one, and it's uh, the country where there is the most of cyber attacks happening already. The same goes for yep. uh, uh, disinformation um, space. You know, information war is happening. That's so right. I the information, the information warfare. We can we can see it with our we can, we see it happening every day, and it's very but hard to fight, madam. And the always problem. A up is always a part of this disinformation campaign as well. Let's not forget it. All right, and we won't. Madam, always a pleasure. Thanks so much for taking Thank the time this morning. Have a nice day.